Hello and welcome to Noble Electron Control. In this lecture we're going to talk about pulse width modulation and the H-bridge. So you can see on the contents whereby you can see the key topics of pulse width modulation, the H-bridge. I'll show you the, the hardware and software implementation of the H-bridge and the software implementation of the pulse width modulation. I'll start off though by just giving you a recap into how we use the Arduino with Simulink for um, automatic code generation. And yeah, that's and then at the end I'll I'll give you an example where we use a little RC car where we're using pulse width modulation and also the H bridge. So the key learning points after this lecture, I hope that you can understand the operation of the pulse width modulation through software implementation and also ex be able to explain the operation of the H bridge through hardware and software implementation. So an example similar to the one in the previous video from this, the first series, if you watch them. So what we're effectively doing is, is creating a algorithm on the on the microchip on the on the Arduino board to control the speed. Or I shouldn't say control to turn the speed of the motor or the rotation of the shaft um, on and off. So you can see here on off and then back back on again. As we did, like I said, in with the the R with the LED, we're using MATLAB version two thousand nineteen A for these tutorials, these examples. So in terms of the hardware, you can see here I've connected a wire to the to the DC motor and connected it to pin nine. What you'll see is that I've connected it to this tilde pin here that enables us to do pulse width modulation that we'll talk about later. But at the moment, all we're trying to do is just turn the DC motor on and off. And you can see the other wire here I've connected to the ground. And here you can see kind of an illustration of what it looks like in real. So in terms of the software that we're going to embed onto the, onto the microchip, you can see here what we've got is the pulse generator pulse generator and again like I said this is the same as the LED. What we're doing is we're applying an amplitude of one. We're applying this for um sorry the period that we're looking at sorry is 10 samples. So you now you should understand the idea of sampling interval or sampling rate or well, sampling interval. So sampling interval and the sample time is one. So that means in terms of this what we're looking at is the period is 10 seconds and the pulse width is five so that means effectively we're turning well pulse width which is the number of samples which is five so we're turning the well we're applying four voltage amplitude of one for five seconds and so you can see here i've got a scope so i can look at the um the input being applied and removed to pin nine okay so in terms of um running this so once you've kind of got this, the software where well, you've got hardware here sorted the software if you look back at the at the first um, video that we did on the pra practical, so the introduction to using a microcontroller Arduino with MATLAB the Simlink, and follow these steps in terms of how you set up the the um, getting it all running in using Simlink as like you can see on this video. Okay, so that's initially to get you back into the idea of um, in this case turning the motor on and off and applying full power to it, so five volts. However. That isn't very good in terms of when we move on to control because we probably don't want to be turning the motor on and off. We want to be turning it um, on and off to a certain degree. So we want to be turning it on and off in, well, between on and off, we want to be um, effectively controlling the speed between on and off. So we use pulse width modulation. So it's a method of reducing the average power delivered by an electronic signal by effectively chopping it up into discrete parts. So what you've just seen in the video is something known as, if, well, when we're applying this to the pulse modulation, zero duty cycle. So that's when you're effectively applying zero volts. And 100% duty cycle, where we, we were applying five volts. Okay, because we're using an Arduino Uno that operates on five volts. And if you remember, the Arduino had an eight bits of resolution for its pulse width modulation. So that means it has 255 different values. So between zero and five volts, we can effectively apply 255 different values of um, power or between zero and five volts. 
So in terms of if you're looking at this, 50% duty cycle, what you can see here is the power or the voltage has been applied for uh, this amount of time and it's also been removed for the, the equal amount of time that's been applied. So what you do then, as I said, you take an average. So you can see the average is in the middle and that would then correspond to 2.5 volts. And likewise, between 0% duty cycle and 25% duty cycle, uh, sorry, 50% duty cycle, and if you're looking at 25% duty cycle, you can see in terms of if you're looking at the cycle, it's, t it's turned on for 25% of the time and turned off for 75%. So if you take the average, you would get 25%. Okay, that would correspond to 1.25 volts. And you can see here in terms of the, the resolution, so one halfway, but approximately 127, and then fully applied 255. Okay, so over that, you can understand like the mapping between zero and 255 also duty cycle and how that corresponds to varying the voltage between zero and five volts. So then if we look at an example, what we've got here is an example whereby we've used the, the example from week, um, not week, sorry, from the series one video. So if you look again, like I mentioned, the introduction to using a microcontroller Arduino with MATLAB and Simulink. So look at this, this is the effect of the hardware I've used. And then if I go back here, how I've now set up the software. So I've got pin nine, I've got a pulse width modulation block. So make sure you get a pulse width modulation block. And in terms of um, this now, the input, I've used the signal generator. And the signal generator, the waveform we've gone for is a sine wave with an amplitude of one and a frequency of 0 0.7 radians a second. Okay, now because we're using pulse width modulation, this reads values between zero and 255. So what I've done is multiply the signal generator by 255. So effectively, when the amplitude of the sine wave is one, it multiplies with this, which uh, which is then two, well, multiplied by again 255, which is then 255, which would apply that you wanted the full power, i.e. the full five volts supplied from the pin. Okay, however, if you, obviously you remember from a sine wave, you have the positive part, the negative part, so what I've done is I've used this amplitude block. So you effectively now we're going to end up with like a jumping rabbit sort of idea. So we don't get any negative values. So now if I just play the video to you, you can see there the vary, varying brightness of the LED. And very similar, if you look on this video here, we can use something called a, a slider gain. So a slider gain, you'll find it in the Simlink um, browser. And what this slider gain allows us to do, if we put here, you can see if we put a low and a high, so we can put a high in terms of 255. And this then enables us to vary it between zero and 255. And you can see I've got a constant of one going in. And it's the same idea as over here, multiplied by 255, which we can vary. Supply it to the pulse width modulation pin, pin nine. And it's exactly the same idea. So you can see in this video, um, reducing, increasing, the um, in terms of the slider gain, so that's zero, then I've gone up to 186, 255. I mean, you can see obviously as a result, the <clears throat> voltage supplied by the pin increases. Well, the supply increases. Remember though that there's actually a, res a series, um, a resistor, sorry, in series in the circuit, so it's reducing the voltage that's actually supplied to the LED. So that's kind of serves as a, as a kind of to introduce you to the, the, the idea of a pulse with modulation. Now, if I go on to looking at the DC motor speed, so the example that we had earlier, earlier we were just turning the speed on and off. However, now I've used exactly the same configuration and applied this to the DC motor. And now what you can see, if I, if I move the slide again, exactly the same idea, you'll see that the speed or the rotation of the shaft of the motor um, increases and decreases as you would expect. So you can see that. Okay, so if we move on now to something known as the H bridge. So this is um, effectively a device that consists of four switches and we use it to change the polarity of the motor. 
And what I mean by that is that we want the motor maybe to travel forward and then we want it to travel in reverse. So imagine um, you've probably all got a, a, a DC motor at some point and you've connected maybe a nine volt battery lead, uh, nine volt battery with leads to it and you've, you've touched the wires and, and the motor spins one way. Then if you were to swap the motor, so swap the live to the other side of the motor and then connect it, you would obviously see that the polarity of the motor changes. That's exactly how a H-bridge works. Because if you look at the configuration here, <clears throat> what you've got is four switches, one, two, three, and four, and with the load in the middle, which is the motor. And depending on which switches are open or closed, so if, for example, if we were to close these two switches, then the live would be supplied here, and obviously this goes down to the ground. And alternatively, if you look at this configuration, if we were to close this switch, close this one and open the other two, the live would be supplied here, ground, and then down to the ground here, and the, the polarity of the motor would switch. So all the four switches can be turned on and off independently. If you wanted to turn the motor off altogether, you would have these two, um, well, yeah, these two may be turned on, these off, and likewise. And in terms of what a H-bridge looks like, I've got an example of a H-bridge here that we use in this example here. So what I've got here is a, is a H-bridge and a, and a DC motor. So you can see here, the important things is, you can see pin nine and 10. I've got these here, and these are effectively supplied to these two pins here. Okay, so these are, you have actually got pulse width modulation, but initially in the example I'll show you, there's actually no pulse width modulation. Also you're supplying a, a power source of nine volts. So in terms of, okay, that's the hardware, in terms of um, setting it up. So in terms of the software, what we've got here is, you can see we we had the Arduino, um, we, had it, we had the leads connected from the Arduino to the H-bridge at pin nine and pin 10. And at the moment you can see there's no, uh, we're not using pulse width modulation at the moment, we're just using one and zero, one and zero, where obviously one would correspond to 200, um, well, would, would correspond to 255 in terms of resolution, so five volts. So in terms of, you've got these four, um, well these, um, sorry, these four, and then you've got two switches. So the logic of the H-bridge working works like this. So if you want the motor to go forward, you have EN1 high, and EN2 low, reverse, EN1 low, EN2 high. And if you want it to stop, put either, either well, both either high or low. So in this case, they're both high, so the motor wouldn't in fact spin. So if you think about this, so what you're doing is you're, if you've got um, from pin, well from here to pin nine, you're supplying, say for example, you've got it closed, you're supplying this, so you, you're saying five volts. And if you had this one down at zero, that would be effectively saying um, no voltage. So if you go back to this, so you'd effectively from pin nine to the green wire, you'd be supplying five volts here and zero volts here. Okay, so that would then, in terms of the H-bridge configuration, would um, supply power to to if we to go back to maybe something like that, okay? And then if you look at um, here, so if we say, okay, the other way around, so if this one was low, and this one was high, it would mean then that you want you were supplying power to pin 10. So if we look at pin 10, this the yellow would then be supplying power here. Okay, and then it would then correspond to behaving something like this, so the power would then be supplied like that. So it just switched the polarity of the motor. So in terms of um, showing this in um, operation, I've got a little RC car here where I've combined pulse width modulation, also the H bridge. So what you'll see is the motion now of the the wheels is, is forward. And what you'll see is if we're looking at pin nine and pin 10, and I'm just gonna stop this video because what you'll also notice is I'm using the pulse width modulation block here and here. And you'll also notice that I've got these slider gain blocks here. So I've kind of integrated from the initial um, example where I showed you the DC motor. 
and also um, with the H bridge. So I'm using pull, just to again re-say, I'm using pull through modulation blocks here, and I'm also using slider gains. And you'll see initially here, pin nine, zero um, is being supplied. And you'll see in pin 10, you've got 200, uh, well, 204 being supplied. Okay, so that corresponds to voltage maybe, it's gonna maybe about four point swing volts. And then what I can do is then obviously change these. And then you'll notice then that now if you were to look at the car, the polarity of the motors would change. So the actual wheel would be in reverse now. What I'm going to now do is change the gains. You'll notice this one's not going to do anything because at the moment it's on zero. If I slide the other one though, you'll notice that it does. Okay, so what that's done is it slightly increased the voltage and you can see actually the polarity of the motor there has changed like I said it would be because the, the, the track's now going in reverse. So now if I kind of, I'm going to vary this a bit more now. And what you'll see is the operation of the zero to hold, where it's effectively holding the signal for TS seconds when you vary it. So you can see that and TS seconds, so the sampling interval in this case is I think 0 0.2 seconds. Okay, so obviously this is all in open loop at the moment, but you are effectively doing by varying this, you're doing the control in the future when we introduce control. This is what your control will do obviously to to um, to meet some sort of desired outcome or, de or your desired reference your desired outcome yeah so more details in terms of some of the some of the in terms of using this and the and the control will be given in the future videos though future lectures so in terms of summary so I hope you've had you've been able to by now you can explain the operation of the pulse width modulation. So rather than just having the state of a, say for example, a DC motor just being on and off, we can effectively vary the speed of the motor by just, um, by just um, effectively chopping up the, the electronic signal sent into discrete parts and then taking an average. Um, and we can vary it from, zero, from, from for example, zero to um, five volts we can vary that from well from zero to if we say volt five volts is 100 percent from zero to 100 percent with 255 increments and you've seen how to increment um how to implement this via software using matlab and simulink and you've also you should be able to explain the operation the h bridge and how this operates with a dc motor to change the polarity of the device so effectively to change the to have the motor going forward and also in reverse. So in terms of the key learning points, I hope that you, you can now explain the operation of the pulse width modulation through software implementation. So pulse width modulation, we do it via software. software. And also I hope now you can explain the operation of H-Bridge through hardware and also software implementation. Okay, you have the little H-Bridge, the little board, and you also develop the logic behind operating the H-Bridge in Simulink. Thank you for listening. If you have any questions, please feel free to um, please feel free to contact me. All right, thank you.